Welcome to the Ninja 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. In this guide we'll cover all of your skills as you train to have a rabbit hat, while Viera still can't wear any, better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch us go from this... ...to this. This series is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV or the MMO genre in general, or generally just still inexperienced. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openers and overall rotations. This is not meant to be a purely optimal guide. If you wish to be optimal at level cap, there are further places you can research your job on. We will, however, be crafting rotations as we go to help new players understand what goes through creating openers and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tools will be shown at the level cap for each section. Level 50 for Realm Reborn, level 60 for Heavensward skills, level 70 for Stormblood stuff, level 80 for Shadowbringers levels, and level 90 for Endwalker. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the General tab of your Actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 90. Just put skills on your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you are leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on how I set up my UI, check the description or the card in the corner for a video on it. And keep the following in mind. Patches can change jobs still. Be sure to check the description for any patch notes for minor potency changes or skill changes, or any other special notes. With all that out of the way, let's begin. Ninja is fast and frenetic even among other fast DPS. It has what I consider to be the most hectic opener in the entire game. High number of actions in a very short window. It has a speed boost so its basic attacks are fast, even without everything else piled on top. The rest of the time is pretty chill, but openers are just so busy that it is a main focus. Your main gimmick is Mudra, a set of three buttons that when used in different orders gives different final skills. This gives Ninja a lot of potential abilities to use all within the same set of buttons. The downside is you need to memorize all of these patterns one way or another, as you will use every single one of these depending on the situation. And this means not using Doton on bosses. Just stop. You actually can't start as a rogue meanwhile. You must start as any other class first. Complete your level 10 class quest, then go to the guild in Limsa Lominsa. Which means if you did not start in Limsa, you need to also progress the story until you reach it. Let's get into the finer details of each skill now. Level 1, Spinning Edge. On a 2.5 second cooldown is our most basic of attacks. It does 180 potency of damage to an enemy, just hit enemies till they die. Level 2, Shade Shift. On a 120 second cooldown, Shade Shift is a shielding ability. You give yourself a shield for 20 seconds, worth 20% of your max HP. This helps you for surviving out in the world, but also will help you later out in party content. You're not the weakest defensively, but you're not immortal either. Most bosses eventually have some form of raid-wide damage you can't avoid. Can you shade shift to block some of the damage? Or maybe you made a mistake and are going to take avoidable damage. You can shade shift just to negate some of the mistake. Or maybe you already made a mistake and are taking extra damage from everything. Shade shift to fix that. Help your healers out by dodging, and help them further by using shade shift for your survival. Level 4, Gust Slash. This does a 100 potency attack to the enemy, unless you use it in a combo. Then it does a much more reasonable 260 potency. Combos are extremely important for melee to deal with. Whenever you progress combos, the next step in line of the combo will light up like so. There's other stuff that light up like this, but combos are one to get used to. Follow up Spinning Edge with Gust Slash every time. Back and forth until everything dies. At level 8 is our first roll action, Second Wind. This and all other roll actions are key parts of your toolkit, however, brevity dictates I do not go over them here. Put them in your bars, and if you want descriptions of them, head to the card in the corner or in the description for a video on them. We also have Leg Sweep at level 10. Level 10, Hide. This is a weird one with a couple of layers. 
It has a cooldown of 20 seconds. It makes you invisible while reducing all movement by half. While invisible, enemies cannot see you. Any action will end the hidden buff, or pressing hide again. The uses of this are very limited. Anything 10 levels or higher cannot be hidden from. Special enemies like hunt mobs cannot be hidden from either. Further, bosses in dungeons also have true sight. Not that you would want to be hiding in bosses. Even further, you can't even use this in battle. You have to use it before battle. So for now, your only uses are for getting around in the overworld where enemies are tightly packed together, which there are a few cases of after level 40. At this level, hide is kind of worthless. Use it for a class quest and that's about it. Another role action comes in at level 12, Bloodbath. Level 14, all fours. This reduces all fall damage. Yes, the game has fall damage. No, you should never be jumping off cliffs in combat. And yes, you can still die from fall damage if you are in combat. Outside of combat, fall damage is never lethal. Level 15, Mug. This has a 120 second cooldown and does 150 potency of damage to an enemy. But because it's an ability, we can weave it or use it between our weapon skills without losing time. This gives us free damage. Throw it out anytime you can. There's a very niche but very useful tool to mug though. If you kill an enemy with mug or the very next attack, there is a chance you get extra loot. Keyword, chance. If you're ever on a crafting binge or looking for extra loot for selling, this can be a few more gill in the pocket. But also retainers do this work for you? Unless you need a lot of the item, just have retainers do it. Use Mug for damage. Level 15, Throwing Dagger. This is a class quest skill, which means you can't use it without doing a class quest. Do your quests. They give gear and now skills. This isn't the only time. I won't be saying when another quest skill comes up, but the top left of the screen will always denote when we're talking of quest skills. Just do them. As for Throwing Dagger, this skill sucks. It only does 120 potency to a single target. The benefit of this is that you can attack from a range, far away, up to 20 yams away specifically. The only use of this is to leash a single mob away from a group, so you don't end up fighting three enemies at once. As a ninja, you get several long range options, all of them far stronger than Throwing Dagger. There might be the very rare case where you can still use Throwing Dagger, but it's even harder to justify than your average ranged attack for a melee. Half the time you never had to be out of melee range. The other half, you only needed to dodge for half a second. And the final remaining few cases... Well, let's get to a ninja toolkit, and you'll see. Level 18, Trick Attack. This is one of our most important attacks, but we're getting a bit too early for it to be properly useful. We cannot use this skill unless we are under the hidden buff from Hide. Trick Attack has a 60 second cooldown and does an attack worth 300 potency of damage. However, if done from behind an enemy, the rear, it does 400 potency. This is our first positional skill. All melees have these, and Ninja has a few. The rear is denoted in the following picture by the red portion. Regardless of if you get the positional, the target you hit will also take 5% extra damage for 15 seconds. 5% is small, but 15 seconds is a decent length of time. And considered later, you have 8 player and 24 player duties, so that's pretty good. Again, the issue is hide. You can't use this in bosses, and that's the only real good spot for this. Sure, early on if you get a tank who is only pulling singular groups of enemies at a time, you can quick pop into hide and trick attack one until we get attacks that hit multiple enemies. But any tank that pulls multiple groups and does it fast? You're better off skipping it. By the time you get into hide, a quick tank will already be dragging the enemies away and out of range. But it'll be a situation by situation basis. Level 20, Fleet of Foot. Unlike all fours, this actually has a use in combat. This is a permanent speed increase. It's about 10% on top of a base movement. This makes it 10% easier to dodge any errant AoEs or mechanics fights bring up. Sprint is still better, but having 10% faster movement no matter what is a very useful tool. Just don't get overconfident and take unneeded hits. Faint is our level 22 roll action, 
and my favorite. Level 26, Aeolian Edge. This is your third combo hit, comboing off of Gust Slash. So Spinning Edge, Gust Slash, Aeolian Edge. And you should always use it in a combo, because it will do 320 potency of damage. Further, this is also a rear positional. It does 380 potency from the enemy's rear. It's not much new, just spam your combo over and over on enemies. Oh, and don't bother trying too hard to get positionals while solo. It won't work too well unless the enemy stops to cast something. To obtain the ninja job, you must first reach level 30 and complete the level 30 rogue quest. Additionally, complete the main scenario quest, Self-Management, which is at level 20 in the story. Return to the guild and the quest should be there for you. Level 30, 10. This is where things start to get confusing and busy. First off, it has a 20 second cooldown and upon activating, lasts for 6 seconds. If you let this 6 second timer run out, you lose the use entirely. This is called a Mudra. Mudra all have a 0.5 second recast time. If you use 10, rather than the normal 2.5 second global cooldown, it will have a half a second cooldown applied to everything. Secondly, it has two charges. Skills with charges can be used multiple times, and 10 has two, with a charge time of 20 seconds. In total, that's 40 seconds of charge time. But you'll notice the two that denotes how many charges you have disappears when you hit 10, and you can hit it over and over again more than twice. That is because you cannot use this skill alone. Let's look at what else we get with 10. Level 30, Ninjutsu and Fuma Shuriken. Executes a specific ninjutsu action coinciding with the combat. What is this word soup? What this is trying to say is that the mudra combo you press changes the skill. Right now we only have one mudra, so we're limited. If we press 10, watch ninjutsu, it changes into a different skill. Press it again, it changes to something else. Three times or more, it doesn't change beyond the second time. That's because pressing 10 more than once, despite having charges, is a failure state. We get a little bunny rabbit ninjutsu worth the highest DPS in the game, DPS being DAWs per second. Known as bunnying, if you bunny, you failed your ninjutsu. Another failure state is using any other skill besides mudra. If you use 10, then spinning edge, you will bunny. When you press a mudra, you are committing to using a ninjutsu. So let's back up to what happens when we press 10 a single time. Ninjutsu will turn into Fuma Shuriken. This, and all ninjutsu, have a 1.5 second recast timer. With a 25 yom range, this does an attack of 450 potency to a target. That's a really big hit, considering Aeolian Edge is only 380 with a positional. Upon pressing Fuma Shuriken, the 1.5 second global cooldown triggers, and 10 will now be missing a charge. While the Mudra has the charges, this is more like charges for casting ninjutsu. The only exception is if you let that 6 second timer run out. Remember, when hitting 10, a timer begins. This is how long you have to hit ninjutsu, or that charge will be lost. Under normal circumstances, this shouldn't be much of an issue. So we broke it down, let's now put it all together again. Press Mudra buttons to make ninjutsu change. Using the same Mudra more than once is a failure, as is using any other attacks. Press ninjutsu afterwards to send the attack. You have up to two charges of these, so one thing we can do is 10 Fumashuriken, 10 Fumashuriken. And finally, we only have six seconds to use it once started. Once you hit a single Mudra, six seconds later, you'll lose the charge. There was a lot of technical stuff in there, but when you're doing things properly, it's relatively simple. That technical stuff is good to introduce now because there's other stuff to worry about as we go on, and will be reinforced. One other interaction is with Hide. Let's say you kill an enemy after using both your charges of Mudra. If you press Hide, all charges will be restored. This detail is extremely key for all ninja openers, and just general play. We won't build one yet because currently we don't have much to go off of. Spam your main combo, use Mudra when you can, and use Hide before every battle so you can refresh your charges of Mudra. Things don't get any simpler from here. 
Level 32 gives us the roll action, Arm's Length. Level 35, Chi. Chi is our second mudra. It shares the same two charges as Ten does, because again, it's more uses of ninjutsu that the charges are referring to. If we use just Chi, we once again get Fuma Shuriken. A single mudra is what gives us Fuma. However, what happens when we combine them? Ten Chi Ninjutsu, Raiton. Ten followed by Chi will turn Ninjutsu into Raiton. Raiton is a whopping 650 potency of damage to a single target from anywhere within 20 yams. This is completely replacing Fuma Shuriken. The only reason you will use Fuma is if you accidentally start with Chi, because as we will see, the order of the Mudra matters. Chi 10, Ninjutsu, Katan. Reversing the order of the Mudra gives us Katan. This is our first AoE, Area of Effect skill. This does 350 potency to a target within 20 yams. All enemies within 5 yams of the original target will also be hit for 350 potency. For our first AoE attack, this is an extremely strong one. The charge time is short, and we can have two of them back to back. Anytime there are two or more enemies, use Katan instead of Raiton. Takes the same amount of time to use, but does a little extra damage. Just make sure the enemies are stacked together when you go for it. Remember all the lessons we already learned, too. If you use two of the same mudra, it fails. We can't do 10-10, chi-chi, or 10-chi-10. It's not just being back-to-back. -back. And remember to keep using Hide to get more uses of Raiton before bosses, and Katan for packs of trash mobs in dungeons. Level 38, Death Blossom. This is our main AoE skill. It's a normal 2.5 second global cooldown. It has a 5 yarm range, attacking all enemies in a circle around our position. It does 100 potency of damage to all enemies hit. Obviously this is far weaker than Katan, but this doesn't have a 20 second charge time. Anytime there are 3 or more enemies, get spamming this AoE. And the more enemies there are, it gets even stronger. Big groups from the tank, big potential for big damage, and if it wasn't obvious, the same rule goes for Katan. Level 40, Assassinate. On a 60 second cooldown, this does 200 potency to a single target. Much like Mug, this is just some free damage. The only difference is this one has no extra effect. Well, it does. It has an animation lock. When about to dodge something, don't hit Assassinate, or you might get hurt. Though at these levels, that's nothing a Band-Aid can't fix, so don't be too afraid. Level 40, Shikuchi. On a 60 second cooldown, this is a movement tool. It's a bit finicky to use, but luckily the job quests themselves actually teach you to use it. First, you select the skill. Aim with the mouse or using the camera on controller. Then click the place you want to travel to. Press X for controller users. The range is 20 yams, so you can quickly teleport over to any position within that range. That's the same range as Raiton if you've already gotten used to that distance. This is a prime candidate for a macro that teleports you to a target. Just because ground targeting skills can be... janky. In a bad way. Slash AC, Shikuchi, open carrot, T, close carrot. Can maybe put it on a mouse over macro? With a little research, or even checking down in the comments I bet, you can find a wide array of ways to format a macro for Shikuchi. Or just be a tryhard like me, and always do it manually. Level 45, Jin, Hyotan, Dotan, Hutan, and Sweetan. I laid out all the skills we get with this level right there, just to emphasize how huge of a skill this is. Sure, it's just another Mudra, but another Mudra that gives us far more combinations. Jin by itself, Fuma Shuriken. Jin Chi, Raiton. Jin Ten, Katon. We're going over skills we already have to point out something. With the exception of Fuma Shuriken, what matters is not the order of the Mudra, but the final Mudra in the line. Remember that Ten Chi is Raiton too. Ten Chi and Jin Chi both result in Raiton, because Chi is the final Mudra in the line. The same follows with Chi Ten and Jin Ten, both are Katan because it ends with Ten. And that leaves us with the ninjutsu of two mudra ending in Jin. Ten Jin 
and Chijin gives us Hyoton. This is trash. It only does 350 potency to a single target. It, however, binds them in place for 15 seconds. Binds are removed upon taking any direct attack damage, even auto attacks, which is why Hyoton also cancels your auto attacks until your next weapon skill. In party content, binding a single enemy is all but pointless outside of high-end raids where a bind might be needed, something I don't even think exists. So though you might consider using it if you get yourself in a bad spot. But again, it's only one enemy. And a bad spot's kinda more than just one enemy. Simply put, ignore Hyoton. But, and this is a very important asterisk, if you are the type to practice your inputs and practice your mudra combos, practice Hyoton too. We're going to come back to this one much later. It's bad right now, but learn how to use it in a vacuum. Personally, I think of Mudra as 1-2-3 based on when you learn them. If Raiton is 1-2, Hyoton is 2-3. Now let's talk about the combinations we get with 3 Mudra. Jin Chi Ten or Chi Jin Ten gives us Hutan. Hutan is so important, it comes with an entire UI element. This pinwheel is the Hutan gauge. Upon applying Hutan, it will fill and slowly tick down for the 60 second timer. So let me sum it up for you. Always put on Hutan. But what does it do? For 60 seconds, as mentioned, this reduces your weapon skill recast time and auto attack delay by 15%. This does not include Mudra in Ninjutsu if you are worried. Half a second and 1.5 seconds are quick enough, but 15% on your main combo attacks is essentially a 15% damage boost. Over the course of an encounter, you'll do 15% more weapon skills and auto attacks. Obviously, it's more complex than that in the actual damage you get out, but it truly is an extremely important buff to keep running. It only gets more important as we go on, too. Jin Tenchi, or Ten Jinchi, is Doton. Let me just say now, once again preparing for later, pretend you can only use Jin Ten Chi. This sounds weird, and it is, but it'll make sense at 90. I mean the level 70. For now, let's talk about Doton. Doton is an AoE dot, damage over time, with a 5 yarm range. Dots do damage every 3 seconds on the server tick. Divide the timer by 3 and you get 8 ticks of 70 potency. Multiply that together and you get Doton doing 630 potency of damage. Think I did the math wrong? No, it's just the tooltip leaves something out. Watch when you place the Doton down. It does damage on placement, so secretly it hits 9 times. And let me say this a few times. This is weaker than Riton. This is weaker than Riton. This is weaker than Riton. This has always been weaker than Riton, unless you were doing super, super, super high end optimizations. Doton on a single target is not good. Never has been. Pre pull Doton is a different story that I won't be going over here. Please stop using Doton on a single enemy. Back to the skill, it also applies heavy to all targets who step inside the puddle. It's an attempt to keep the enemies in the puddle. This is stronger than Katan if it gets over half the duration. Make sure to properly place down your Doton puddle in the middle of enemy packs after the tank stops grabbing enemies. Just hope they don't move the enemies out of the puddle afterwards. For any group fights, throw out a Doton. Then swap to Katan until the puddle disappears. If the enemies are somehow still alive and not close to dying, throw out another Doton and hopefully that'll carry you to the fight's end. Ten Chi Jin, or Chi Ten Jin, is Sweeton. Let me give you the same warning as with Doton. There is only Ten Chi Jin for getting Sweeton. Chi Ten Jin isn't going to be worth it outside of some very fringe cases. Again, this will make sense only later. Sweeton does a decent hit of 500 potency. No big deal on its own, it's weaker than Riton. However, it has an additional effect of Sweeton for 20 seconds. Sweeton acts in place of the hidden status, which means... Level 18, Trick Attack. On a 60 second cooldown, this does 300 potency of damage, or 400 from a target's rear. It also puts 5% damage up debuff on the enemy for 15 seconds. This can only be used after using Sweeton. Coming up to a boss, we can throw Sweeton on them to get our hidden buff. 
then throw on Trick Attack for a big glob of damage and buffing the entire party's damage. Further, note that this is an ability. Like Mug or Assassinate, we can throw it out between weapon skills for no loss damage in clipping the GCD. So throw out a Sweet On every 60 seconds, then pop up Trick Attack as soon as you can. It's a big hit for you to do, and definitely increases the team's big hits. Let's go back to Ninjutsu as a whole for a few more comments, though. It's going to change in a bit and get a lot smoother. But at this level, consider the following. Hutan is 60 seconds. Trick Attack is 60 second cooldown. And you get three ninjutsu every minute. Two of those ninjutsu are called for in single target. One for Hutan maintenance, and one for Sweetan. The third will be Raitan. In AoE, you dedicate one to Hutan, the other two are for Dotan and Katan as called for. Keep this in mind for your overall rotation. Three ninjutsu, all three different ninjutsu uses. And as for remembering each and every mudra combination, here's a chart. Down in the description in all the videos is an image set with all the rotations and such, but I'm making extra note to point it out here. Oh, and just because we have Sweeton doesn't mean we get rid of Hide. That still resets our mudra on cast. We're gonna see it appear in the opener we build in a little bit. Here we have our final roll action, True North at level 50. Level 50? Kasatsu. On a 60 second cooldown, this gives you one free ninjutsu cast. Any and all of them can be used. But we're gonna be limiting ourselves a lot for this one. Ideally, Raitan and Dotan only. Katan if you already put up a Dotan. This is because of the additional effect. The ninjutsu is powered up by 30%. Also, you only have 15 seconds to use this free ninjutsu before Kasatsu wears off. But under any normal circumstances, this will never run out. Simply put, use this to do a super ninjutsu. Raitan gets close to 850 potency of damage on a target when used. It may only last for one ninjutsu, but that is a hugely powerful attack. And then again, there's something like Dotan, assuming the full duration that's also over 800 potency of damage per enemy in the puddle. Even assuming a good tank, you'll likely miss a tick or two on some enemies, but that's still a huge bit of damage. And even if it's on Katan, that's 450 potency per enemy. But consider this as well, our opener. An already big hit under Trick Attack. This is the main crux of Ninja, putting up Hutan, putting up Sweeton into Trick Attack, then fitting in as much as you can under the buff. Our allies will be doing the same ideally, and there is a lot we'll be able to do. Pre-pull, Jin, Chi, Ten, Hutan, Hide, Ten, Chi, Jin, Sweeton on pull, Kasatsu, Spinning Edge, Mug, Gust Slash, Aeolian Edge, Trick Attack, Ten, Chi, Right On, Assassinate, Ten, Chi, Right On, Spinning Edge, Gust Slash, Aeolian Edge, Ten, Chi, Right On, One, Two, Three, Spam until your next Trick Attack window. Every little bit of this has a bit of info to talk about. Pre-pulls are often hard if you're a newbie to a duty. The issue is you need to prepare before a tank pulls, and if you're the last out of a cutscene, tank probably has already pulled. So not only do you not have Hutan or Sweeton going, you're going to have to cannibalize your own opener to get them up. You'll lose two of the Raitons, leaving only the Kasatsu Raiton. But every now and then you get a tank who lets you get the bare minimum. So let's get into the proper opener. The moment you hit with Sweeton, hit Kasatsu to get the buff running. It had a 15 second time limit, so let's actively use that fact. From here we do a simple 1-2-3 combo string. We use Mug in here only because of later openers. You can push this back to after the second Raiton for extra damage if you wish, but I'd rather build up muscle memory for later. After Aeolian Edge, we use Trick Attack. Then the Trick Attack window itself, we use our Kusatsu immediately for super strong Raiton. We have time after Ninjutsu to weave in Assassination into a second Raiton. We do have a charge of Ninjutsu from Hyde still, after all, so use it. We then have to fill in another 1-2-3 combo before a third Ninjutsu comes off a cooldown. 
Throw this out as one last right on. You'll get one more attack in before trick attack ends, and we're stuck with just a basic 1-2-3 spam. From this point forward, we also have to worry about maintaining Hutan. Every reopener with trick attack loses one of the right ons. This is also to say, outside of refreshing Hutan and prepping Sweeton for trick attack, don't spend Mudra outside the opener. We can fit in what ninjutsu we get under trick attack. Of course, there are exceptions that crop up, such as movement far away from the boss. This isn't something you've seen much of ever in a Realm Reborn, but it crops up now and there. If you ever feel pressured to hit throwing daggers, don't. Use Raiton instead. Just remember that you'll be a Mudra behind, and this opener has none to spare. The final Raiton can be safely ignored if you think you will need it later for movement. And one last note on Trick Attack. Use it on the back half of your GCD. Sure, you can use it instantly, but note the delay in my actual usage of it. I don't use it until the second half of my global cooldown. Maximize Trick Attack timing. It's worth it. But now let's Karaoke Opener. Karaoke openers are defined as me speaking the skills in time with the actual button presses. And given Ninja is a very fast job, especially in openers, expect me to cut off myself a lot. I'll be speaking the names quick to minimize cutoff, but... Well, let's just take a listen. Prey pull. Jin. Chi. Ten. Hutan. Hide. Ten. Chi. Jin. Sweeton. Kisatsu. Spinning Edge. Mug. Gus Flash. Alien Edge. Trick Attack. Ten. Chi. Right on. Assassinate. Ten. Chi. Right on. Spinning Edge. Gus Flash. Aeolian Edge. 10. Chi. Right on. 1, 2, 3 spam until your next trick attack. We're going to get a lot of quality of life going forward, but also tons of extra stuff we have to worry about both opener and rotation wise. Level 52. Hawk Mujin Satsu. This is a combo off of Death Blossom. No longer do we just spam one button for AoE with a little Mudra on three or more enemies. This is 120 potency to every enemy within 5 yarms of yourself. But even better, this also adds 10 seconds to your Hutan timer. When dealing with trash mobs and doing AoE, your timer is now infinite so long as you keep attacking. Again, 3 or more enemies, AoE spam. And now it helps keep Hutan going. Level 54, Armor Crush. This is our single target version of a Hutan Refresh. This is another third combo hit, comboing off of Gust Slash. It does 300 potency, or 360 potency from a target's flank. The flanks are the sides of the enemy. Here's a picture. Those red spots are the sides. But anyway, it's a tiny bit weaker than Aeolian Edge by 20 potency. But stronger if for some weird reason you can't get the positional for Aeolian. And more importantly, add 30 seconds to the Hutan timer. That dedicated mudra you were saving for Hutan is gone and can be swapped for something else. You put Hutan up pre-pull, hide, then completely rely on armor crush. Well, big 60 second long cutscenes notwithstanding. There's always going to be those fights that have the boss leave the arena entirely, no enemies to hit. You can't entirely rely on armor crush. Anytime Hutan drops below 30 seconds or the boss is about to leave anyway, refresh the timer with Armor Crush. Level 56, Adept Assassination and Dream Within a Dream. Adept Assassination is upgrading, get this, Assassination. Dream Within a Dream is 3 hits of 150 potency each for a total 450 potency attack. That's more than double the power. Further, it removed the animation lock. Back in A Realm Reborn, the animation lock wasn't too big of a deal to deal with, in general. Getting into higher level stuff, mistakes are more costly. So the removal of that is a bit more of a big deal than the damage. Otherwise, it is still just extra damage. Level 60, Horizon. That part where I said you can't rely on Armor Crush entirely, I didn't say you need to use Hutan mid-fight. If for whatever reason Hutan falls off, Horizon solves the issue. It does only 200 potency of damage, but instantly grants a full 60 second Hutan. The boss leaves for an entire minute, you make a mistake, anything, don't mid fight Hutan, just pop Horizon. And then that's it for Heavensward. 
big quality of life expansion, but otherwise no changes to our opener. The only rotational change is no longer needing to refresh Hutan mid-fight with Mudra. We're still going to dedicate all Mudra to our opener when we can, but that just means more Rhyton. Just make sure to throw in two armor crushes somewhere between every trick attack. 60 second trick, 60 second Hutan, and two 30 second armor crushes ensure the timer never runs out. Stormblood is about to contrast everything by making the job far more complex. Level 62, Shukiho. We now have a new gauge called the Ninki Gauge. Basically, all of our weapon skills now grant us 5 Ninki with each use. What is all? Spitting Edge, Gust Slash, Aeolian Edge, Armor Crush, Death Blossom, Hawk Mojin Satsu, Horizon, Throwing Dagger. Sadly, it's only 5 Ninki. Mudra never grant Ninki either, so gaining Ninki is slow going, and you need a whopping 50 before the main gauge fills and starts to fill the rolled up scroll for extra Ninki. Eventually, you cap out at 100 Ninki, so careful not to hold onto all of it too long. Which, let's talk about how to spend it. Level 62, Health Rog Medium. With no real cooldown and costing 50 Ninki, this does 160 potency of damage to a target and all enemies within 6 Yalms of the original target. So this is slightly bigger than your other AoE options. It also has a range of 25 Yalms, so you don't need to be next to the enemy. And given this is our only Ninki spender, this is a single target attack too. It's stronger than Mug, and can be used more often than Mug, even for single target. But definitely prioritize using it for AoE. Level 64, Enhanced Shikuchi. This is an extremely niche upgrade. Using Raiton, Katan, or Hyotan, all of our two Mudra Ninjutsu, will reset the cooldown of Shikuchi. So to make use of this, you have to use Shikuchi, use Mudra out of line with your opener, which luckily you can afford to do with the Hutan fixes from Heavensward, then Shikuchi again, within 60 seconds. They don't need to be back to back, but they do need to happen within the 60 second Shikuchi countdown for this to ever come into play. Other than in dungeons where you accidentally fell behind the tank and needed a Shikuchi to catch up, there's almost nowhere I can think of that makes use of this specifically for an average player, especially given how finicky ground target stuff can be. Level 66, Enhanced Mug. Remember how I said Mug would become useful later? It now grants us 40 Ninki upon using it. That's almost a full use of Hellfrog Medium, all on its own. That original Mug placement makes sense now, doesn't it? Otherwise, yeah, nothing else to it. Level 68, Bavakakra. This is our single target Ninki spender, costing 50, sharing the same 1 second cooldown as Hellfrog, and having a 3 Yom range, meaning it is a melee based skill. It does 400 potency of damage to a target. That's a lot bigger of a hit than Hellfrog Medium. So on bosses, throw this out instead of trying to save Ninki obsessively. Overall, it still will be better to use Hellfrog as much as possible if your tank is doing big pulls since, what, up to 8 enemies hit? But it's no longer strictly the only real option for dungeons. Level 70, Tenchi Jin. Notice this shares the name of your three mudra. This will from now on simply be called TCJ to minimize confusion. TCJ is a lengthy 120 second cooldown that can be a bit of confusing to work with. First off, you cannot be moving at all when you activate it. Any and all effects will be cancelled if you are not standing still when pressed. Be absolutely sure you're stationary. And moving after placing it down will also cancel it. Secondly, just like Mudra, this has a 6 second timer. If for whatever reason you press this and have to delay a second or two, you're going to run out of time. Thirdly, all actions that are not Mudra are completely locked out. This includes auto attacks. So all three of these things together say, when you press TCJ, you are committing 100% to TCJ. So be sure to properly weave it immediately after using a weapon skill. Also conversely, if you use Kasatsu, TCJ becomes blanked out. You cannot Kasatsu your TCJ. Now for the use. Notice that all of your Mudra have changed. All of them have become Fuma Shuriken. Press any of them and it will gray out, turning the other two into different Mudra. Essentially, you are inputting a Mudra combination and using every skill along the way. 
Let's take Sweeton for example. Pressing 10 will use Fuma Shuriken. Pressing Chi uses Raiton, then Jin will execute Sweeton. All three skills doing damage and giving you their effects. Also, instead of the normal 0.5 second recast time, Mudra and the TCJ have a 1 second recast, slowing it down just enough to be reasonable. This is where those orderings I mentioned kick in. Pretend Sweeton can only be used by going Ten Chi Jin, because let's take the other option. Using Chi first executes Fuma Shuriken, then using Ten executes Katan. Single target skill, AoE, single target, where Ten Chi Jin is all single target abilities. As such, with little to no exception, our single target use of TCJ is Ten Chi Jin. The same applies for Dotan and our AoE use of TCJ. Jin is Fuma Shuriken, and we can't avoid that. Ten will then execute Katan. Finishing with Chi ends with Dotan, so we can get a free Katan and Dotan out of this in AoE. Again, take the other option. Ten first is Fuma Shuriken. Jin second gives Hyotan, the worst mudra we could use. So then, let's bring up that chart again and fill it in more with TCJ. Ten Chi Jin for single target scenarios, and Jin Tenchi for AoE. Remember this, and all other rules for TCJ. Using it on cooldown like everything else should just naturally align it with your trick attack windows and bosses. Especially because now we have to fit it in all into our opener. TCJ alone makes our opener a lot busier, but we have even more than just that. We have to fit in our Ninki games too, which add a touch of extra weaving into the fold. Pre-pull, Jinchi Ten, Hutan, Hide, Tenji Jin, Sweeton on pull, Kasatsu, Spinning Edge, Mug, Gust Slash, Aeolian Edge, Trick Attack, Ten Chi Right On, Dream Within a Dream, Ten Chi Right On, TCJ, Ten Chi Jin, Bavakakra, Spinning Edge, Ten Chi Right On, then onto Single Target Attack Spam. This opener almost completely removed the filler from the middle. All we have left is a single spinning edge towards the end to get one last right on in. We keep the starting portion the same up to trick attack, but now gives us a total of 65 Ninki as well. We hop right into using our Kasatsu as normal on right on, following that with Dream Within a Dream to get the cooldown rolling. After the second ninjutsu, we weave in TCJ and then go into using those. As discussed, Tenchi Jin is the order we use for Fuma, Raiton, and Sweeton for the biggest possible hits. Then with the small weaving window after we throw out Sweeton, pop Bavakakro to spend our Ninki while still under Trick Attack. After a single spinning edge, we've delayed long enough as mentioned for one last Mudra. From here, all we could do is just spam single target attacks. If we get enough Ninki for Bavakakra, throw it out. But if possible, hold it for your next Trick Attack window. An extra 20 potency on top of the 400 is nice enough to look out for if you can. Getting this opener together was less about planning it out and more about figuring out how all our tools work together in general. TCJ is a real wrench in the works, but within an opener it fits pretty snugly, which gives us a quick path into doing the karaoke opener. Pre-pull. Jin, Chi, Ten, Hu Tan, Hide, Ten, Chi, Jin, Sweeton, Ksatsu. Spinning Edge, Mug, Gus Slash, Aeolian Edge, Trick Attack, Ten, Chi, Right On, Dream Within a Dream, Ten, Chi, Right On, TCJ, Ten, Chi, Jin, Bavakakra, Spinning Edge, Ten, Chi, Right On, then on to Single Target Attack Spam. And I wanted to just simply put a note here for AoE rotations. Most jobs you just tend to throw stuff out at random or following the same single target priority. Ninja's priority system goes as follows. Wait for the tank to finish pulling all groups. While running next to them, feel free to pop a normal weapon skill just to build Ninki. When they stop, get as safely toward the middle of the group as you can without getting into AoEs. Shade shift for safety though. Start with TCJ for a Katan and to get Doton down. Then you can Kasatsu for a Super Katan into two normal Katans, with Hellfrog Medium in there somewhere before dropping to normal AoE spam. 
Be sure to use Mug and Dream Within a Dream in AoE too, just for a little extra damage. I'm not putting it in a full-on rotation image, because AoE is a lot more freeform. It can change with the situation and the tank's positioning, and stuff like that. But now let's go check out the Shadowbringers toolkit and how it throws in the kitchen sink. Since when does Authard have plumbing? Level 72, Macewee. On a 120 second cooldown, this dispels the Sweeton buff and grants you 50 Ninki. This sounds like it's needlessly making things more complex if you overthink it. Look back to our level 70 opener. We use Sweeton in the opener to get Trick Attack, then we use TCJ to Fuma, Rhyton, Sweeton. We have a second Sweeton, and it comes every two minutes, same as Maysui's cooldown. So after TCJ in bosses, we can Maysui to dispel that extra Sweeton for more Ninki. There are also potentially uses for this in AoE. For example, when running along with the tank and just building Ninki with random attack spam, open the fight with a Sweeton. By the time the tank stops running and grabbing more groups of enemies, you'll have gained that charge of ninjutsu back while giving you an extra 50 Ninki for Hellfrog Medium. This assumes the tank is doing multi or big pulls though. If they're single pulling, just skip it. The katana will be worth more on average, I would say. Don't feel too pressured to use it in the good situations either, as it is tough to remember personally. Level 74, Enhanced Shikuchi 2. This one is a much more useful upgrade to Shikuchi. This turns Shikuchi into a skill with charges up to two charges. The total cooldown is 120 seconds to get both back on the normal 60 second charge time. Being able to use two Shikuchis within 60 seconds of each other and a third after 60 seconds from the first is far more immediately useful. Plus, most fighting has long pauses between every use of Shikuchi. So even when you need both charges in a short span of time, both charges will return to you before the next time you need it. Level 76, Enhanced Kisatsu, Goka Mekyaku, and Hyosho Ranryu. Enhanced Kisatsu is a trait that upgrades Katan and Hyoton, but only when under the effect of Kisatsu. Remember all the way back when I told you to learn how to Hyoton? This is why. If you forgot, go learn it now. Tenjin or Chijin, whichever is more comfy for you. First, let's talk about Katan's upgrade, Goka Mekyaku. The size and range of the same, but does a massive 600 potency to all enemies hit. And remember, Kisatsu increases all damage done by 30%, so this is closer to 800 potency for an AoE. Yes, that is extremely high, right? Hyotan's upgrade under Kisatsu is Hyosho Ranryu, a 1300 potency hit. Adjusted for Kasatsu, that's nearly 1700 potency. This will always be used under Trick Attack, so almost 1800 potency. Ignoring any and all party buffs you might also be getting. This is by far and large your biggest hit, so absolutely be sure anytime you use Kasatsu, single target, or AoE, make sure you're using the upgraded skills. So important, I've added them to the cheat sheet. Level 78, Shukiho 2. This is super simple, but boosts our Ninki economy a little bit. Aeolian Edge and Armor Crush, the combo finishers, both now give 10 Ninki instead of just 5. Our failure sections are a bit more enriching, but you still need more than two whole combos for a single Bavakakra, or for an entire, level 80, Bunshin. This is another Ninki spender, Costing 50 Ninki and on a 90 second cooldown, you get 5 stacks of Bunshin to spend over the next 30 seconds. Using any of your weapon skills, main combo or AoE combo, please don't use Throwing Dagger, will have your Shadow perform an attack. If it is a melee attack, it does 160 potency of damage regardless of which melee attack it was. AoE attacks do 80 potency from your Shadow's attack, and it does mirror your attack and position, so be sure to place your AoE as normal. Further, it gives 5 Ninki every time it hits, giving you a 50% refund on its cost. And because your attacks are also generating Ninki, the 5 attacks you have bunch in 4 will guaranteed bring you back to 50 Ninki. Essentially a full refund for you, if not in reality. Speaking for just the power of bunch in itself though, that's 800 potency in single target 
and 400 potency for AoE per target. Much stronger than the 400 for Bavakakra and 150 for Hellfrog. The big, big, big issue is 90 second cooldown. Because of this, this will be available for less than half of your trick attacks. You want to use Bunshin on cooldown. Don't delay it 30 seconds just for trick attack unless there's some sort of downtime that already delayed everything. You gain more on cooldown than you lose for not having it always in your trick attack. Everything you just pop as needed and it should align itself with full uptime. Downtime is when things get tricky. Which, speaking of uptime though, our opener shifts around a little bit to account for Bunshin. Pre-pull, Jin, Chi, Ten, Hutan, Hide, Ten, Chi, Jin, Sweetan on pull, Kasatsu, Spinning Edge, Mug, Gus Slash, Bunshin, Aeolian Edge, Trick Attack, Chi, Jin, Hyosho Ranryu, Dream Within a Dream, Ten, Chi, Right On, TCJ, Ten, Chi, Jin, Maesui, Spinning Edge, Bavakakra, Ten, Chi, Right On, Gust Slash, Aeolian Edge, Bavakakra, Normal Attack Rotation. Same start, but immediately takes a turn with Bunshin. This both spends our Ninki and kickstarts the Ninki economy for the back half of our opener. When we enter Trick Attack, we heal Shio Ren Ryu like a good ninja for that gigantic hit. We even dream within a dream to start the cooldown, and then use Rhyton as normal. TCJ ends with us weaving in Maesui, giving us more than enough Ninki for our first Bavakakra, which we use after Spinning Edge. Like before, this is about where our Mudra comes off a cooldown, so we use that. Go back to our normal attacks, and after Aeolian Edge we'll have enough Ninki for one last Bavakakra. From here, it's all about managing our Hutan timer and saving up Ninki for next trick attack, if we can. Again, it's actually a fairly simple opening when you break down all the individual parts. The issue is the execution. Even with single weaves, you're probably clipping a GCD at points. It's not the end of the world, though. It's not going to make you a bad ninja. You'll lose at most, like, 1% next to a ninja with no ping issues. That's not going to make a difference outside super high-end world first stuff. And on that note, let's sing a couple more notes with the karaoke opener. If the 70 opener seemed fast and cut off full, this gets even worse. Pre-pull, Jin, Chi, Ten, Hutan, Hide, Ten, Chi, Jin, Sweetan, Kasatsu, Spinning Edge, Mug, Gus Slash, Bunshin, Aeolian Edge, Trick Attack, Chi, Jin, Yoshi Ren Ryu, Dream Within a Dream, Ten, Chi, Right On, TCJ, Ten, Chi, Jin, Maesui, Spinning Edge, Bavakakra, Ten, Chi, Right On, Gus Slash, Aeolian Edge, Bavakakra, Normal Attack Rotation. Ironically, I feel like the Endwalker stuff we're about to talk about slows us down quite a bit, but it isn't any slower. We're still plenty busy. Level 82, Phantom Kamaitachi. This is attached to Bunshin. For 45 seconds after using Bunshin, you are granted Phantom Kamaitachi Ready, which turns Bunshin into Phantom Kamaitachi. It has a 20 yom range so you can throw it out from basically anywhere. It does 550 potency to a target and 275 potency to all enemies within 5 yoms of the original target. It also grants 10 Ninki, further increasing how much Bunshin refunds its own cost. You are already using Bunshin in both single target and AoE, this just gives you an extra big hit to throw in. And do be sure to use it, there are two ideal ways to use it in single target though. By now you've genuinely seen how bad throwing daggers are, I hope. Well, Phantom Kamaitachi is yet another skill that can be used for the same purpose. If you must run out of melee range, use Kamaitachi to lose no uptime. The other use is to... not use it. Consider again that Bunshin has a 90 second cooldown, which makes it misaligned with Trick Attack. Kamaitachi has a 45 second timer, which means it can be delayed until your next Trick Attack. If you don't need it to use it for Disconnect, which is the better option, then always use it under Trick Attack. Oh, and it also adds 10 seconds to your current Hutan timer, which makes it easier to maintain going through your rotation. 
Level 84, Shukiho 3, and Melee Mastery. I'm pairing these together not because they're the same level, but because they serve the same purpose. Shukiho 3 once again boosts our Ninki gains of Armor Crush and Aeolian Edge, now to 15. This increases our economy and overall increases the number of Babakakras we get for more damage. Melee Mastery is much more direct power boost than just increasing power, but also with a terrible tooltip. For example, it says Aeolian Edge is boosted to 140 potency, but it's uncomboed potency. But what it should say is its potency is increased by 40. Uncomboed, uncomboed positional, combo, and comboed positional all went up by 40. Not that you'd ever use it outside of a combo. Level 86, Hollow Nazuchi. Doton is still not good for single target, and pre pull Doton is still a different discussion. I bring that up because Hollow Nazuchi is a buff to Doton. When using Katan, Goka Mekyaku, Phantom Kamaitachi, or Hawk Mujinsatsu in a combo, your Doton puddle will explode into snakes and do an additional 50 potency of damage to all enemies inside of it. This isn't a huge boost to Doton, but it further incentivizes proper placements like you were already doing, I hope. It can add up fairly quickly, but it doesn't at all change how to perform AoE. Level 88, Enhanced Mace Wii. Using Mace Wii will now grant you the buff of Mace Wii for 30 seconds. Your next buff of Kakra will do an additional 100 potency. Given Meisui itself gives 50 Ninki, it's outright buffing that specific Bavakakra alone. Given we're already using Bavakakra as soon as we can after Meisui, doesn't change anything. Level 90. Enhanced Raiton, Forked Raiju, and Fleeting Raiju. Enhanced Raiton gives Raiton an extra effect. Each use of Raiton grants you a stack of Raiju ready, up to a maximum of three. Really, we're never going to be seeing three stacks, because if you do any other weapon skills, you lose all of the stacks. So we'll be using them as soon as possible. The exception is if you are spending your Raiju, which we spend on Forked Raiju and Fleeting Raiju. The reverse is not true, though. Raiju skills do not break your normal combos. Personally, these names are reversed. Forked Raiju has a 20 yom range, does 560 potency to a target, and is a gap closer. It also gives 5 ninki. From the edge of basically any arena, you can gap close to the target. It's a very quick closer, getting you to the enemy in an instant, maybe even faster than Shikuchi. Which also means the animation lock is also very small. Even when used in point blank range. Not that we would do that, because we have Fleeting Raiju. Fleeting Raiju is the same power, 560 potency, and gives 5 Ninki. It has the normal melee range and no animation lock. Forked Raiju should as a result be purely used as a gap closer, while Raiju Ready should default be used on Fleeting Raiju. And again, you must use Raiju Ready immediately. You can safely stack them because Mudra aren't weapon skills, but if you have three stacks of Raiju, you're using three Raiju skills back to back. But because we basically almost exclusively use Mudra within Openers, we won't be seeing much of it outside of Openers unless you're doing some optimization or movement things. Right on when you're not in range of the boss and all that. So let's see how our Opener changes with the advent of the Raiju. But first, I want to again stress single target Doton is still bad. However, pre pool Doton is a different thing and is very good and very free if you know how to pull it off. Hopefully in higher end content you get tanks who allow for it, but I've gotten instant pull tanks even in extreme content this expansion. Look into it if you want to further improve yourself going into high end level 90 content but I am still ignoring it for beginner purposes. Pre-pull, Jin Chi Ten, Hutan, Hide, Ten Chi Jin, Sweeton on pull, Kasatsu, Spinning Edge, Gust Slash, Mug, Bunshin, Aeolian Edge, Trick Attack, Phantom Kamaitachi, Dream Within a Dream, Chi Jin Hyosho Ranryu, Ten Chi Raiton, TCJ, Ten 
Chi, Jin, Meisui, Fleeting Raiju, Bavakakra, Fleeting Raiju, Bavakakra, Spinning Edge, Ten, Chi, Raiton, Fleeting Raiju. Everything has been shaken up. First, Mug is in a double weave with Bunshin, only for the purpose of potion windows. Ping is still an issue, and if you aren't using potions, you can keep Mug where it was. Then comes Aeolian Edge and Phantom Kamaitachi. Strictly speaking, if you aren't doing pre-pull Doton, swap the two around or you're losing a bit of power, but to keep things easier to perform, personally, we're going with this. Weave in Dream Within a Dream as normal, and go into your ninjutsu spam. Yoshu Ranryu, Raiton, TCJ, Meisui after the Sweeton, and that's all normal. But now we have two stacks of Raiju ready, one normal and one from TCJ. This means two fleeting Raijus, but our Ninki is getting up to cap, so we're going to do Bavakakras after each one. Remember, only weapon skills lose our stacks of Raiju. Bavakakra is an ability, so we can do this. Unlike the other openers, though, we don't need to delay, but we still do. One spinning edge, because Trick Attack is about to wear off. If we use Raiton first, we waste Trick Attack time that could have been used on Spinning Edge. Afterwards, we can throw out the final Raiton, use Fleeting Raiju, and then continue your combos as normal until your next Trick Attack. Apply all other rules discussed within each skill as you go beyond the opener, and you should do fine. But now for our final karaoke opener. As I said, generally this feels like a slower paced opener, even if it is actually faster. The Phantom and Raijus really do a lot for the feel of the pace. Free pull. Jin, Chi, Ten, Hutan, Hide, Ten, Chi, Jin, Sweeton, Kasatsu, Spinning Edge, Gust Slash, Mug, Bunshin, Aeolian Edge, Trick Attack, Phantom Kamaitachi, Dream Within a Dream, Chi, Jin, Yosho Ranryu, Ten, Chi, Right On, TCJ, Ten, Chi, Jin, Meisui, Fleeting Raiju, Bavakakra, Fleeting Raiju, Bavakakra, Spinning Edge, Ten, Chi, Right On, Fleeting Raiju. But that's Ninja. You're not very sneaky with all these lightning bolts going everywhere? but it's a very fun and very frantic job if you can get past how rough the openness can feel. Thank you for watching this Ninja 1-90 leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. I am always seeking to improve, as should you. Don't stop with this guide, even if I succeeded in helping you improve. Please leave a rating, comment, sub, those really do help creators, or even go follow my Patreon. Have fun in your adventures across Eorzea, and may the power of Anne and Idhogs lay waste to your enemies.